Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today it's the start for a little long-term experiment. I want to see if it's possible to reach the return of investment of a mid-range CPU if it's added to an ordinary GPU mining rig and let it mine as well. Since my other rig is an octo miner with onboard CPU, we'll do this on the AMD rig. Back then I went for a good old H110 motherboard, so my possibilities for CPUs were limited. This means we have to go for LGA1151 socket CPUs. Also not the updated versions, but the original ones. This leaves us with 6th and 7th gen Skylake CPUs by Intel. So we're talking quad core. I didn't want to go for an i7, but I went deal hunting and found an i5 6600K with an cooler included for 120 euros. The included cooler was by Fazen, of which I've never heard of, but I saw some different air coolers of them online. Another 10 euros we have to earn back are for the Noctua fan I'm putting on the heatsink. <laughs> yes, I'm a little fanboy and just couldn't resist and didn't want to use a brand name I don't know. So so this is the 80mm PWM Redux version. Today we will do the augmentation to the rig and set everything up, but we will return to this experiment in the future to see how it turned out. So first of all it's time to take the rig apart again, removing all the cards and everything which is in the way of the motherboard. Let's talk a bit about why I'm doing this. What motivated me for this experiment is that all my other CPUs, one i7 4790K and one Ryzen 1700X have both earned their respective buy prices in Monero already. I've bought none of them for mining specifically, but they are always mining in off time. The raw dollar numbers per day when I pulled the trigger on the CPU looked bleak. But I still wanted to try it. I also have to admit to a little fail here. When I did my calculations beforehand, I calculated with the original Kryptonite hash rate, not the Kryptonite heavy hash rate. So it won't be Monero set and forget like the other CPUs. But I'll really need to do some experimental mining with the little thing in order to see any returns. You'll also have to consider that this is a long term experiment. So don't forget that projects like Monero are forking every six months. So right around the next fork, there should be spikes in profitability again, like there was in April. I am leaving the two Molex connectors for the PCI sockets because Molex can be a pain in the <coughs> So <coughs> this is a good chance for me to give the motherboard a good cleaning because otherwise it's hard to reach. So we are using maintenance tools you often see on the channel here. For example WD40 contact cleaner for the board itself and later 99% alcohol for the CPUs. Don't forget that after the contact cleaner you will have to wait until everything has dried off again. Always nice to have a spare Pentium lying around in worst case scenarios. So let's also clean the old hardware and put it away while the motherboard board is drying. So if you wanted to do this right now from the start when building a mining rig I'd actually do it differently. I'd go for an AM4 motherboard as basis for the mining rig directly, for example a B350 board and I'd choose one of the multitude of Ryzen CPUs just because of cache size, efficiency and core counts. Back to our 6600K our rig should use around 90 watts more with the CPU attached. What's not ideal is that the H110 motherboards don't like overclocking, so we can tweak our FI further to optimize more. As we can't overclock, the low profile cooler will be enough. If you wanted to go for crazy CPU overclocks, a bigger cooler or even water cooling would be recommendable. But we don't want to set back our numbers for the experiment even further, so that's the setup. i5 with low profile cooler with Noctua Redux fan. Let's add a piece size drop of thermal paste. I'm using my thermal grizzly paste again, like you already saw, and after that, just some, um, say, wiggling. Air coolers can often be a pain to mount, but we got it. What we have now is looking much, much better than the original intercooler, even though we'll never see it again under the cards. Also, this time I want to be a bit more intelligent than in the past, so I'm not rebuilding everything before doing the testing. Let's reconstruct the basics first and see if the update was successful. So only one card and CPU to check. Also, you can see the little HDMI screen from the last video in action for the first time. For building, I always carry the machines in my office space and in the past, Past, I always had to disconnect one of the screens I'm using and well make more chaos here than I do anyway. Now even though the screen is small it is much easier to work like this. You can even power the screen from the rig itself with micro USB. And yep all is good so the 6600k was recognized without problems and now you can see me doing some setup originally for mining Monero heavy because I did not realize my hash rate failed. First I'm getting some gigabyte bloatware. You can always control your CPU fans from the BIOS but I wanted a software solution. 
information. So this will differ from motherboard to motherboard. For example, on my i7, it's the MSI control center. With Ryzen for me, it's Corsair Link for the pump, etc. So here you would choose according to your preference and manufacturer. For my initial tests on Monero, the CPU with the Noctua fan would not go above 55C. So perfect. Other than that, I was doing some setting changes for Kryptonite Heavy, like enabling large page files. If you're interested in a tutorial on CPU mining, so the software side of things that is, please tell me in the comments since today we are only looking at the hardware. What's left to do is to reassemble everything and hope I did not destroy anything in the process. While we are doing this, another little disclaimer. Please don't get me wrong, the point of this video is not to tell you to go out and buy i5s and i7s for your 1151 sockets, but if you already know this channel you know we are here for the long run. So it's rather the start of a long term experiment and I personally just always think it's a pity if a chip socket stays unused. Also experiments like this always motivate me to stay on my feet so now I have a reason to occupy myself with new CPU mineable coins again which I have not done in ages. We'll be returning to the hybrid rig in the future at the latest exactly one year from now to see what the CPU managed to earn in the meantime. While rebuilding my card order is changing a bit again like always. Maybe you were wondering why the rig is still only a 5 card rig but the 6th RX 580 is still being borrowed by a PC of mine. I'm I'm not sure which GPU will end up in the Ryzen system, new generation or Vega maybe, so it will stay like this for a while. And that's why I left the space next to the Monster Card 3 for now. I call it Frankenstein's GPU and you can find the video link in the top right corner too. There's one last thing I have to mention which was strange. The Gigabyte software actually allowed me to overclock the CPU a little bit, which normally shouldn't be possible with H110. So I could increase the CPU voltage to 1.3, bringing us to 3.6 GHz. So a bit better than before. Checking the wattage, the 90 watt TDP does not count for mining. So with all four threads engaged, the CPU is drawing around 60 watts and with the small overclock, we are still staying at only 60 C Celsius. So folks, that's already it. We added an i5 to our AMD GPU rig, making it some sort of CPU and GPU mining hybrid. If you are interested to see updates on the experiment in the future, please consider to subscribe to the channel. To all new people joining and to my beloved subscribers, thank you very much for tuning in. I wish you all the best and happy mining. Bye!